I enjoy working with a team of programmers sitting down together um, to the extent that we build our own software in for our law firm. Wow. You see. So yeah, I started to build it 10 years ago. Hey everyone, this is June and I'm the founder of Easy Law. So together with me, we have Dato Andy Lau Han Yong, who is the founder and managing partner of Lau and Partners joining our Easy Law interview show today. So since its establishment in 2009, 2009, Law and Partners rapidly expanded from a sole office in Damansara to its current six offices across Malaysia. From a one lawyer firm to a large size firm with more than 30 lawyers dedicated to serve its growing clientele nationwide. So that's all, Andy. It is our pleasure to have you today in our show. Hi, Jinlo. Hi, everyone. Yeah, great to have you. So that's all, Andy. I want to know so much more about you and so as our viewers as well. So can I know like what has inspired you to become a lawyer since young? Right. I always think that um, law is an important knowledge. So, um, and because it concerns everything and all aspects of our life. So for example, if you want to buy a property, you want to buy a house, buy a car, is you got to sign an agreement. So if you're going to start a business or you're going to invest in a business, business law is also very important for you. So so I think um, one of the reasons why, why I don't become a lawyer is because I think law, the knowledge of law is very important. So on top of that, I think um, a bit of myself in my secondary school time. So I actually participated in the debate team. Uh, representing my school so i always think that debating or communicating or convincing each other is it's an art and it's something that i enjoy doing yeah so did you so, guys so that, win that, in the yeah. debate team oh yeah uh, I, I i mean we we represented our school mm -hmm. um in secondary school time high school time and i i'm it's an honor that we we won uh, i mean we were we were the champion i mean for the kl and clang by the, by the time Wow, that's really amazing. Like, I, I guess that that really inspired you to become like the stepping stone that you want to study law then. Then can I know, like, what's your philosophy to manage a great law firm and great team? Right. I think the uh, um, the philosophy of success and the philosophy of managing a team is always striving to um, build more leaders than having mm. more followers. So um, by having more followers, uh, I feel that, you know, uh, it's just a team that will follow all your instructions, follow your directions, and, you know, they're not, there's no breakthrough and there's no creativity mm. there. So so I think um, uh, my philosophy of, of, of success or, or what I firmly believe is to, to have a platform where there is a team of Avengers and a team with a diverse um, experience, uh, a very diverse um, strength, um, so 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 a platform where everyone can grow and learn from each other from there. So so that um it creates a good synergy among the lawyers and 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 that will actually bring us bring the lawyers and bring the firm to another next level. I love what you were saying. You were saying like we should actually focusing on building more leaders. I I really believe that um nowadays this is how we should actually build the empire. I I don't know whether you read the book. This book is called like Built to Last. So your right. philosophy is just like that book, the philosophy of the book, like you are building empire just to, and it is built to last. I really love that. Thanks for that. So, and I saw that you are very active and always prioritize digital transformation initiative when it comes to managing your law firm. Like how do you manage to time managing all these different elements in a firm? I think digital transformation is part of my interest. Mm -hmm. Um, um, I I mean, again, it all goes back to how I started in secondary school time. So mm -hmm. I was the president of uh, the uh, computer society in my high school. So so that gives me, um, I mean, that inspired me to go on IT uh, and focus my time on IT. So currently, I'm also uh, the chairman of a public sector company, which focuses in IT and phone app as well. So um, to me, uh, um, digital transformation does not only covers digital marketing so it involves um, the uh, automation and involves a better digitalized client's experience it involves uh, data analytics it involves automation AI and whatnot so so all these things are um, interesting and it's something that's very exciting to me so so um, I I mean I, I I enjoy doing that I enjoy working with a team of programmers sitting down together um, to the extent that we build our own software. 
in for our law firm. Wow. You see? So yeah, I started to build it 10 years ago. So um with a team of programmers, you know. So uh-huh. so I I mean I enjoy building that and and that helps us to manage the firm better uh, as the firm scale and grow. So so you talk about um time management mm-hmm. just now. So mm-hmm. I think um digital transformation is actually a kind of time management as well because the more that you digitalize, mm-hmm. the more time that you can save. So 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 yeah, that that's that's how I see time management, the relationship between time management as well as the digital transformation. That's really smart. I was like, wow, you have started building all these different elements of digital transformation 10 years ago. That is like, not even we are, actually recent years, we are all more about digital transformation, especially for law firms. It's just because Hmm. we have the COVID and everything. But it's really unbelievable that you actually started the journey 10 years ago. So because you have some background in IT, so I'm yeah, just I mean, curious. back then in secondary school time, I was coding already. Yeah, so <laughs> okay. unfortunately, I was coding and I was like doing websites, uh, learning all the HTML codes. So wow. yeah, that, that's kind did of you, logic. Lah. If, if it's not a part- lawyer, I could have been a programmer, programmer or could have been a civil engineer. <laughs> yeah, because I okay. just like science and physics and math so much. Yeah. I, I think that your personality is like you like building stuff. So you take yeah. the elements of IT, now you're building the empire of your law firms, right? Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. really amazing. I love that sharing. Like I, I hope that viewers, um, whoever is watching this, if let's say you've been liking um that's what Andy sharing, feel free to let us know down below because um uh, we can really learn so much from him during this interview. So I believe that building a law firm, you always will face your biggest challenge, right? So what are the biggest challenges that you have faced so far during your practice or while you're managing a firm? And how did you overcome these challenges? I think the one of the biggest challenge is about um, um, some mentality of some of the team members. So for example, some of the people, they just uh, like to stay in their comfort zone and they don't want to grow further. So if you ask them to grow or you, um, you, know, you push them to grow, then they feel that you're pushing them. You feel okay. that you're forcing them to grow. And you ask them to read the books, they say, hey, why are you are forcing me mm. to read a books? You know, this is not part of my job scope, you see. So so I think the, the greatest challenge is to motivate um mm. uh this type of people, um, in this type of team member, um to let them see uh and to let them really inspire and really go out there and have a breakthrough and have mm. a, 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 a um a breakthrough in their career or to think through out of the box. So um so what how I overcome it is actually um, more on the communication. So I encourage communications in all the aspects, um, as well as the uh, career growth with my team member. So we always always have a chat, and I always um, have a you know discussion about the common goal, the short term, long term, long medium term. You see, so so from there, if if I believe if a person clearly know about their goals, about where they want to be, and that will be the f- real f- real power. That will give them the real motivations for them to work on something that they really inspire or they have determined to do so. So if let's say a person that doesn't have a goal, then it's very difficult for you to motivate them. Yeah. Mm. So so that these I, are how I overcome. Yeah. Mm. I really love this because how you work mm. together with your team, it's you align, you you get to know what's their personal goal, or even if let's say they don't have a personal goal, you work together with them and help them to achieve their dreams and their goals. I think like a lot of youngsters nowadays, they actually want to be part of this kind of environment because all of us, we want to be our own boss, right? So actually your environment is very, um, is very positive in terms of those kind of changes. Really love that. So Thank you. under Thank you. your leadership, Lao and Partners has been nominated as the top finalist of ALB ASEAN Legal Business Law Awards for four consecutive years. So can I know the top three advice that you have for young lawyers out there? Um, I think the first advice is keep learning, mm-hmm. keep um, getting the knowledge, getting the experience and skill because uh, only when you have all this knowledge, skills, then you can grow further. Never shy about, uh, never, you know, never, never stop learning. Yeah, that's first thing. Um, second thing will be the um always go there out there and hunt for opportunity. And when opportunity mm. is there, then grab it, you know, cherish it and, and, and make it happen. So so never shy, don't shy away from, from opportunities. So so that will be my second um uh, advice. Then mm. uh my third is always collaborate with your peers, mm. right? 
will always collaborate with your learned friends. So all of us are in the same profession. So find a way to work with each other. You know, I remember those days when we were in chambering time, when we were having mm -hmm. this pupillage. So for example, if let's say I'm doing conveyancing, if I need some information and some, uh, maybe some precedence for litigation, so I will, I will just text my friend, you know, uh, who, mm. who works in a law firm that probably specialize in litigation. So then they probably share with me some insights and some some uh, of the precedents and uh, knowledge. So so that that's kind of collaboration, you know, just exactly like when we do the law school, doing assignment, that kind of collaboration. <laughs> so, you know, no one is perfect. Everyone has a strength and weaknesses. Mm. So we just have to cover each other back. Yeah. Mm, loving that. So for all <laughs> of you guys out there, so if let's say you've been loving this episode and wish to get connected with Dato Andy, so Dato Andy, how should them be connected with you? Well, I think um you can just write me an email. Um, don't don't shy away. Just just drop me an email. Yeah. Yes. So for you guys out there, just like what Dato Andy said just now, so opportunities are there. So when you see opportunities are there. Go and snatch it. And this is a golden time. So if let's say you want to learn more um, with Dato Andy, Dato Andy, don't do it, do this always, this interview. So I actually will our team will put his email down below. So feel free to grab this opportunity and contact Dato Andy. Okay. So with that, really thank you so much for your time, Dato Andy, for uh, being with us in this Easy Law interview show today. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.